Oh, cool. Let me, let me get first us. Off, sorry, let me first say um, we're e interviewing Logan Bowers um, uh, from approval voting and uh, feel free to begin. Cool. Um, oh, can you give me uh, sharing permissions? I'll, I'll share some slides. Yes. Participants, all participants. Okay, you should be good now. Alrighty, thank you. All right, everyone, thanks for having us. Uh, I'm Logan Bowers. I'm joined here uh, as well with, uh, by Troy Javis. Uh, we're from Seattle Approves. Uh, we put Initiative 134, uh, which is now appearing as Proposition 1A on the ballot. Um, so we're here for the endorsement for Proposition 1A. Um, so we started back in 2020 uh, with a premise of, um, you know, how can we make the best elections possible in Seattle? Um, and we feel that's important because we think everyone deserves uh, great leadership and, uh, and representation in city government. And um, what we saw is that that is not always the case under the current system. So we look for ways um, to um, to improve our representation in city government, and, and we found one. Um, so we started kind of with the question, well, you know, we're enthusiastic about, about voting reform, are other people, um, and we look to other cities. Um, so uh, we're proposing a solution that has been used before in Fargo, North Dakota, and St. Louis, Missouri. It's one of the up and coming uh, voting systems. Um, and what we saw was, yeah, voters in other cities were really excited to get voting reform. So um, Fargo passed their uh, measure at 63%, St. Louis passed theirs at 68%. Um, St. Louis even had a repeal effort um, after using, um, after using uh, a new voting system and they defeated it at 69%. So then we said, well, okay, that's great. Uh, how do Seattle voters feel. So we asked Seattle voters and we did polling here in the city and found that support was even stronger um, at 74%. Um, and we validated that again um, with ballot title polling. Um, so 43,000 signatures later, we ended up on the ballot for a voting reform that uh, many folks have already seen before. So what is it? Well, this is it. Uh, kept it real simple. So um, this is a mock-up of the 2021 mayoral ballot. So uh, we all saw this in the fall of 2021. Uh, there were 15 candidates for mayor. We are proposing in the primaries that rather than um, being forced to pick only a single candidate, um, voters be given the ability to uh, pick more than one candidate, i.e. they can vote for every candidate that they approve of. Any candidate they like, they can give a thumbs up. Um, so this is called approval voting, um, and it has a few really big uh, advantages, especially in crowded elections like we have here in Seattle. The most important is with approval voting, you never risk wasting your vote. So this is a feeling that I think many of us have had when they look at the ballot and you see a candidate you like, and you're like, well, should I vote for them? Because... Uh, um, but I feel like they're kind of a long shot, so I don't know if it's worth it. Um, maybe I'll just kind of vote for this more mainstream candidate that's like fine, but, but I'm not super excited about. Um, you never have to worry about that with approval voting. You can always mark, um, you can always approve a candidate that you really like uh, and you know, regardless of how viable you think they are, because you can always just approve another candidate uh, that you would have voted for instead anyway. Um, it gives you very expressive ballot you get to give a thumbs up or a thumbs down to every single candidate, um, not just one. So, uh, so uh, every candidate sees whether or not you like them, uh, which means that they can compete for your approval. Um, you get a fair measure of, of support for every candidate. So this gives you immense power to reward candidates that listen to you because you, any candidate that shows up at your door and says, you know, I, I care about your issue and I will work on it. You can choose if you'd like to give them uh, approval. 
The last thing that's really powerful about this is it's very, very simple. We get all of the representational power of a voting reform uh, without introducing any real complexity. Uh, so I wanna walk through one of the really kind of key issues that crops up in our races and how approval voting solves it, because I think that's very, very important. So imagine here we have a two-way race between Luke Skywalker and Darth Vader. Uh, get a pretty straightforward election result, 60% for, for Skywalker. Uh, Darth, uh, Darth Vader gets 40%. Uh, the side of light, side of good wins. Uh, everyone's happy. So what happens when we introduce a third candidate? So in this case, uh, we imagine a circumstance where uh, Leia also runs and uh, Luke and Leia then split the vote. Um, so they each get that 60%, they each get a fraction of it. And then what happens is Darth Vader wins because he ends up with the highest percentage of 40. Um, approval voting completely addresses this issue of vote splitting. So this is a split vote where Luke and Leia um, split it and they both lose. Um, completely addresses this because now as a voter, you can approve both candidates, both uh, mm -hmm. Luke Skywalker and Leia and still defeat Darth Vader. Now in Seattle, uh, we have um, a general election with two candidate runoff. So in a circumstance like this, two candidates are going to advance so that you can still kind of refine your choice down to uh, out of, out of uh, those two winners, you can refine your choice down to the uh, final one that you're gonna be most happy with. Uh, this is a big deal because every single race we have in Seattle has tons and tons of candidates. Uh, these are just a few ballots from our last, and you can see they're, they're gigantic. Uh, when there's this many candidates, you're going to get these split votes all the time. Um, and then, but then voters know this. And so there's actually a more pernicious problem that comes up, which is that voters don't necessarily uh, vote honestly for their own choices. And that shows up as good candidates not necessarily um, getting a shot. Voters are like, well, I, I have to pick a candidate that I think is viable. So this is what that looks like, is if you're worried about spoiling your vote and you're like, well, I'm only going to pick a viable candidate, you're gonna to look to somebody to tell you who are the viable candidates you can choose from. And what that turns out is uh, you only get choices from the Seattle Times or the stranger. And in the last decade or so of um, districted elections in Seattle, there's only a single candidate in a single race who has ever won without uh, a primary, without an endorsement from, a major, from one of these two sources. And what's going on here is voters uh, are like, well, I could vote for a long shot candidate that I really like, but, uh, but like, they, you know, I'll probably throw my vote away. So they just kind of pick from the pool that they're given. And so uh, you don't have voters being, uh, voters actually choosing the candidates. So for, for all intents and purposes, uh, we have two power brokers in town that uh, are choosing the, uh, the winning candidates in our primaries. So with approval voting, because you can vote, you can approve as many candidates as you want. You can always be honest um, about a candidate. You don't have to think about whether or not they're viable. You can just approve them if you like them. Um, and then you can decide if you wish to also um, approve a candidate from, from another slate if you're so inclined. Um, this effect does occur in a lot of elections. Um, it's fairly common. Anytime there's a, um, a close race, you're going to see spoilers. Um, I'll just, uh, I won't go through all of the details here, but just real quick, uh, this is a Washington congressional race. Um, what we saw here was about one out of four voters did not, uh, Democratic voters did not vote for the Democratic candidate in this race. Um, they voted for a Republican in this race, which sounds crazy. Uh, it did happen. Um, and, uh, and the results probably should have been, uh, something more like this, uh, but, uh, but under our, our voting system, voters could only approve a single candidate. So um, we, we want every last Democratic voter we can supporting the Democratic candidates and, uh, and approval voting gives those voters who um, maybe sometimes would make tactical choices otherwise, uh, the ability to always approve the Democratic candidate, which is absolutely critical. Um, so we had another close race in the city attorney race here in Seattle. Um, we can dive into the details if you want in Q&A, but, uh, but I'll just say these close races happen all the time. Um, so spoiled races are endemic in, in our city when we have big candidate fields. Um, we did see this play out 
exactly in St. Louis, um, which I think is a very instructive example because they had um, Tishare Jones was a popular candidate that ran in 2017 under their original primary system and then ran again in 2021 under their approval voting system. Um, in 2017, she narrowly lost 30% uh, 30, uh, 30 to 32% um, due to a split vote with three other candidates. Um, when she ran again, we got a much clearer picture of her true support and her actual support among voters was more like 57%. Um, voters approved more uh, one and a half candidates on average. And, um, we ended up uh, we ended up seeing St. Louis actually make representational history. Uh, uh, Tashara Jones was the first black woman to have ever been elected mayor in the city, um, which was a pretty big deal, especially given that the city is forty percent, forty six percent black. Um, so uh, approval voting delivered a, a historically representative result there. Um, I will pause there simply for time. Um, a few things I'll note real quick. Uh, this is a voting reform that's very simple. Our voting systems are already um, certified to use it, which means we can have it with no implementation cost in 2023. We can use it immediately. Um, we anticipate uh, that, that it will be ready for our next election cycle. Um, Proposition 1B will not be available until 2027, likely at the earliest. Um, with that, I'll pause there. Um, so that we can have time for questions and I don't need into that. Great, thank you. Uh, questions? Ethan, are we timing the answers to the questions? Yeah, I think I think so. Um, the e-board is going to ask you questions. You have uh, essentially one minute to answer. Um, and um, yeah. Um, I can go ahead and ask a question. Um, you sort of alluded to this in your last slide, but I'm sorry, Alice. Um, can can you uh, go off of screen share just so we can see uh, we can see the responses? Sure. Or uh, I, I'm, I'm sorry, talking to Logan. Yep. There we perfect. go. Okay, perfect. Um. Uh, can you summarize sort of the what you see as the primary benefits of approval voting over ranked choice voting? Yeah, so um, there's kind of two related aspects that really, um, uh, really matter. So the first one is the, the split vote situation that we talked about. Um, ranked choice does not actually address it. Um, so let me just emphasize that under, under Proposition 1B, you still can have split votes which still then cause your candidate to lose. And when that ha what happens there is when you have two candidates that are close in, in support, if one gets eliminated before the other, they might sail to victory. But if the other one gets eliminated, they might get crushing defeat. Um, and so uh, you can have these little tiny changes in, in the amount of uh, votes they receive, changes the elimination order, um, and then you throw the election to the other person. So the split vote problem is not solved by ranked choice. 10 seconds. Um, additionally, um, so that's that's where the home states and race comes in. Um, okay. Additionally, uh, 